Uh, so hi guys and welcome back to this tutorial so for those who are new here thanks for joining us and over the past couple of weeks i've been doing a tutorial on python for beginners there are three videos that came before this so introduction to python to, uh, for beginners where we covered inputs variables among other things then uh what was the second tutorial i honestly can't remember then the tutorial that came right before this was conditional statements oh yeah the second tutorial was on data type so we started with uh introduction to the basics of python uh for data analysis data analytics where we covered concepts such as variables operators inputs among other things and we covered python data types and finally the last video that came before this one we talked about if else and l if so today we're going to be talking about for loops and we have three YouTube videos that will come after this. So we'll cover while loops, functions, and lambda. I've just not decided if I'm going to combine lambda and functions in one video or I'm going to split it in two. But anyway, let's get into it. So what's a for loop? What's the difference between a for loop and a while loop? And how will you, a data analyst, data scientist, actually use a for loop? And just because I said you are data analyst or a data scientist, at the end of it all, for loops are for loops, while loops are while loops, functions are functions. It's just that a developer will use it a bit differently from how you, the a data analyst or a data scientist, would use it. So for loops are usually used to iterate through something. It could be a list, it could be a string or it could be a dictionary. But for this specific video, we're going to stick to strings and lists. And for people who have been following this tutorial, you're very familiar with strings. We covered what strings are in the second video. So yeah, if you're not if you if you're not familiar with what a list is, sorry, string is, please go and watch the data type videos or just Google, then come back. But I don't even think you need to Google and come back. Like it's you you pick it quickly. Like you get very basic examples that I'm using here. But anyway, so uh, an example of how you'd potentially use it as a data scientist, data analyst. So during EDA, exploratory data analysis, you're exploring your data, you want to visualize various columns, get an idea of what trend is there, how is your data distributed. So let's say you have a column for age, uh, height, and the body temperatures of various people, you want to think, hmm, how is the temperature distributed? How is the age distributed? And how is their height distributed? You could use a for loop. So you could either take, like, have your first piece of code here, and to put your histogram for age, then another one to plot your histogram for height, then another one to plot your histogram for temperature. But it's not very efficient. You could have that one block of code, then iterate through various columns so it'll be the same code creating your histograms but you start with the first column so you start with age and you plot the histogram for age then you iterate to the next column which is probably height you plot the histogram for height then you go to the next column which is temperature you plot the histogram for temperature so don't worry in case it's not like clicking we are going to do an actual example like after I've created enough tutorials to get you guys through the basics, we are going to do an actual project and you'll see how all these various concepts come together. So yeah, without further ado, <laughs> let's get into it. So let's start with, uh, oh, yes. <laughs> we have our data here. So I'm going to be using various African countries a lot as my sample data. So here we have, a uh, good number of uh, countries located in Central Africa, some countries which are located to the east of Africa. And I'm just going to create a list called African countries, yeah? And whenever you're creating a list, you store it in square brackets. So I'm going to take uh, teal chard, and also take the comma. So I'm going to do Angola teal chard, oops. Control undo, control copy, and then I'm going to pick two countries that are located in East Africa. 
And yeah, let's let's print our list and see what our list looks like. Mm -hmm. There we go. Our list has Angola, Cameroon, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, Chad, Djibouti, and Kenya. So I'm just going to comment this out. The next thing we're going to do is actually use a for loop to iterate through our list. So for I in African countries. So this I could be anything, honestly. It could, because this I, think of it as a representation of each element in the list. So at some point, I will be Angola, then Cameroon, then Equatorial Guinea, but you'll see what I mean. So watch the syntax, print. And there we go, we have Angola, Cameroon in the same order. So as I was saying, this I could be anything. It's something that you pick. So if we said we want it to be called country, yeah. So for country in African countries, uh, print countries. Same result. So yeah, this 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 really confused me. <laughs> like when I start, started learning about loops, I was so confused. I was like, why is it called when it's called when it's called country in African countries that made sense? But now it can be I, it can be X, it can be anything I want it to be. That really confused me. But yeah, just know it's just something, it's like a placeholder. Because what are you iterating through? through the various elements in your list. So at some point, country will be Angola, then Cameroon, then Equatorial Guinea, then Gabon. Uh, so yeah, let's do another example, but this time let's iterate through a string, then, okay, so country. Uh -huh. So for, I'll let you I in country print I. You can guess what is going to happen. Yeah, so it's going to iterate through each element in the string, and in this case, it's each single letter in that string. And yeah, that's it. Maybe you can just do one example before I introduce bricks. So we could, oops, okay, we could borrow that. And we can do for I again in numbers, print I. There you go, 20 all the way to 10. So now the next thing I'm going to do is introduce you guys to how to, how do you use how you would use break and how you'd use continue while using a for loop. So the break will help will help you stop somewhere. So like let's say for example we have 20, 30, 49, 45, then 60. So you want to loop through that list of <clears throat> of numbers, but you want to stop at 60. So that's where a uh, break would come through. So your syntax will look something like this. It will start the same for i in numbers print print i yeah if i Put this in bracket. If I is equals to sixty, brick. Uh, let's see. Let's see what will happen. There you go. So now instead of iterating all the way to the end of the list, 10, it will reach 60 and it will stop. So just a reminder, the difference between one equal sign and double equal sign is one equal sign in Python assigns. So if you say i is equal to 60, it will literally assign 60. And if you say i double equals to 60, it's checking if i is equal to 60. So it will do for i in numbers, it will check 20. Is 20 equals to 60? No, it will. Print it out, go to the next one. Is 60 equals to, is 30 equals to 60? 
print it out. 45, no, 60, yes. But let's see what will happen if we used a single, so you get a syntax error. So you have to use double equal sign because you're checking you're not assigning. So yeah, we can do one more example on break and we are going to use our African, our African country list. So I'm just going to convert this out because it's already stored in this environment. I just need to see it to remember. And we can go like for I in African country print I. Yeah. If I is equals to, I'm going to use Djibouti, Djibouti. So what I'm trying, what I'm doing here is, uh, I put, I ordered this list the way it is intentionally. So it started with Eastern African countries. Then it went to, I mean, sorry, it started with countries that are located in the central, around central Africa. Then the last two are selected, are collocated in the east of Africa. Yeah. So I want to just print out the ones that are towards the cent the central part of Africa and leave out the ones in the east. And the ones in the east start and the ones in the east start. Um, okay, just give me a minute. Okay, I am back. My little one walked in. I had to attend to the little one. Okay, so we have an indentation error. Indentation. Oh, you can read it error. So we just need to do that. And there you go. So Angola, Cameroon. Mm -hmm. But notice our list had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven items. Kenya is missing. And I just realized I wanted it to stop at Chad, not Djibouti, because I want countries, only countries that are around the central of Africa, the central part of Africa. And there we go. So yeah, so the next thing I'm going to do is introduce, uh, continue. And I'm still going to use uh, this two, our numbers. I'm going to use our numbers list. And then I will also be using our African country list again. So uh, continue differs with break in that continue allows you to jump over something. So in this case, let's say we just wanted to jump over, oh, sorry, uh, just, okay, yeah. so in this case, let's say we wanted to jump over 60 or we wanted to jump over Gabon and continue, we would use, <laughs> I'm using a word to explain a word. So let's say you wanted to jump over 60 and then keep iterating or jump over Chad and keep iterating, continue will help us do that. So yeah, let's get into an example. So for I in numbers, um, if um, I is equals to 16, continue. Print. Notice what's happened. We have 20, 30, 45, 60 has been skipped. Then we continue with 13, 10. So yeah, so let's do this again. So I'm just going to copy paste, put this here. Now we have for, we need for I in African countries. If I is equals to if I is equals to Gabon, 
continue. So to start with, for I in Angola, print it out, Cameroon, then it iterates to Equatorial Guinea, Guinea and either iteration it should reach Gabon, or I it goes to Gabon, no, let me continue. Then it, it moves on to the next iteration, Chad, then Djibouti, then Kenya. But yeah, let's confirm if that is what will actually happen. Taking a minute, taking a minute. But yeah, why is it taking long? But yeah, uh, that's it for this video. Uh, well, yeah, that's it for this video. We just wait for this cell to keep running. I don't know why it's taking longer than the rest for I in African countries, if I is equals to a bone, continue print I. I honestly don't know why it's taking so long, but yeah. Uh, yeah, that's it for this video. So we can probably just use this one to again, reference how continue works. So how the follow up works for I in numbers. So for I in I, which is 20 in numbers, then 30, then 45, then, uh, then 60, because then 60, then 13, then 10, a follow would ideally just look through this whole list and print all of them out, yeah? But when you introduce a con continue, it jumps through whatever element you specified. So let's see, probably there's something wrong. I really don't know what's wrong, but the good thing is that was the last example, guys. And yeah, thank you so much for getting to this point of the video. I really hope you've learned. Yes. Clearly, I am enjoying this <laughs> and I am studying <laughs> for my master's. So that's a good thing. As I mentioned earlier, I am enrolled in a master's in data science and, and analytics. My plan is to focus more on the data science bit. I want to focus in computational statistics. And for me, this video is yes, an opportunity for me to teach you guys, but I'm also teaching myself. I'm also learning. I'm also remembering a lot of things. And yeah, who knows? Not who knows, like a few days, a few weeks to my exams and I need to refresh myself on something. I'll come, I'll come and watch the same Python tutorials when I get to my SQL tutorials, I'll come and watch the same SQL tutorials. I can't wait to start creating content about statistics. Then, you know, statistics for data science, data analytics. I can't wait to start creating content about the various concepts in data engineering. I can't wait to tell you guys more about what's the difference between data engineering, data science, data analytics. What's an analytics engineer? Like, there is so much coming for you guys. Yeah, the plan is to try and do at least one video every week, but at most three videos, depending on how my week goes. But yeah, that's it for this video. Once again, thank you so much. See you in the next one, which is while loops. And then I, I just remember I mentioned that I'll tell you guys the difference between a while loop and a for loop. And I'm not sure if I said it at the start of the video, but in case I didn't say it, just know the difference between a while loop and a for loop is a while loop comes with a condition. A for loop just loops through the whole list loops through the whole string, loops through the whole dictionary, there's no condition. So very quick difference, but in the next video where I'll be introducing while loops, I will explain more and you guys will see the clear difference between a while loop and a for loop. Otherwise, thank you so much. Have a nice one. If you have any questions, please feel free to put them in a the comment. You could also follow me on LinkedIn. I'm more active and more responsive on LinkedIn since I've been there for a while. But yeah, the plan is to equally be responsive on YouTube. So that's it for this one. See you in the next one. Bye, guys.